have played no less than 19 players. And this afternoon, manager Sammy Chung continues to search for his best side. The Scottish international Willie Carr is back in the midfield. Bill Rafferty gets the striker's job. And with Peter Daniel going to pull back in place of the injured Palmer, Martin Patching plays at number four. It's perhaps worth sparing a thought this afternoon for John McCall, 14 years a Wolves player and a little unlucky to have his testimonial year when Wolves are having a difficult time. Less than 5,000 attended his testimonial match recently and is hoped to be better supported at a number of special events still to be held in the town. Manchester United also make changes from the side beaten at home by Bristol City last week. Jimmy Nicholl replaces Alberston at number two and Brian Greenhoff, recovered from injury, makes a welcome return at number four. But the happiest player on the United side today is Scottish international Joe Jordan. He became a father yesterday for the first time, a daughter who'll be named Lucy. The referee, Tony Glasson of Salisbury. And it will be Manchester United to kick off. Bulls, in their recent matches in good form at home, they've won three of the last four. That's John McCall. Daly. Steve Daly. Watching in black and white, Manchester United in the white shorts, playing from right to left. Brian Greenhoff for the throw. Carpel leaving it for Jimmy Greenhoff. It's Willie Carr. Rocket leaving that for Nicholl. Bit of a chancey back pass right underneath Mel Eve's foot. Stuart Houston. McQueen. to carry the ball the players up front all marked been harried by ease but he was fouled as well and McQueen signalling for the stretcher before the referee got there for the trainer rather the challenge seemed fairly innocent he was being harried by Eves but as soon as he went down he seemed to realise he was in bad trouble and uh, Grimes comes on to play in midfield and this means uh, a reshuffle for Manchester United that won't be as bad as it would be for both sides in these circumstances Brian Greenhoff number four an experienced centre back while he has played for England in that position he surely will drop back alongside Bucket in McQueen's place and number 12 Ashley Grimes assuming his usual role on the left hand side of the midfield it's Greenhoff to Nicholas Hibbit. Grimes got it, now McCarry. Well stolen by Daniel. Rafferty to Hibbert. Switch to Daly. He brought it down so well. The shot wasn't in the same class. Peter Daniel looking such a good signing for Wolves. Greenhoff. Nickel. Akari. In all the years John McCall has been at Wolves, he's never scored a goal in the Football League. Reno. And Nickel beat him now, number 11, McElroy. Kept it in. It's Grimes beaten by Brazier. Matching in the way to Greenhop. Well, space for the shot. Reflected one nil, and that's. 
the way it goes when you're struggling. 22 minutes gone. Greenhoff found himself for the space then. But the deflection by Daniel gave the goalkeeper no hope at all. So, Manchester United lead 1-0. Sad because he'd been having such a good game. The defection left the goalkeeper absolutely stranded. And that does Sammy Chung, the Wolves manager, will be reflecting. When you are in trouble, everything seems to go against you. Brian Greenhoff. Jimmy Greenhoff. Makari. Grimes. On for Jordan. Hibbert with him. Hibbert thought that Jordan put it out of play, though the linesman didn't. So, Houston's throw. Pushing. time in the match hadn't a hope 29 minutes gone walls nil Manchester United 2 Daniel leaves now Hibbert Steve Daly Bucket John McCall powering forward, that's uh, Carr to park in. The, the Manchester United supporters in the background taunting all the Hampton Wanderers. 2-0, 2-0 the cry. And Greenhoff's got them both. It's Nickel. Michael Roy, park in to McCall. Colin Brazier. Jimmy Greenhoff not laid properly. Park in. Hibbert. Daly. Good run by Hibbert. It's in 2 1. And the luck has turned slightly for Wolves. A brilliant interchange between Daly and Hibbert. Hibbert played the ball. Daly quickly on for Hibbert. Brilliant run by Hibbert. And the goalkeeper, it went under him. He got his hand to it, but his hand turned it back in the net. So, 31 minutes gone, and Wolves pull one back. Wolverhampton Wanderers 1, Manchester United 2. Kick to be taken again. I think there's a word of sympathy there for goalkeeper Paddy Roach from one or two of the defenders. He got his hand to the ball, it was slightly under his body, but his hand not strong enough to hold the shot. It was powerfully struck, and it turned it back into the net. Just the sort of reviver Wolves needed. Daniel to Patchy. Hibbert. Daly. 
back in. And Eve's arm was up surely, but the referee hasn't whistled, has he? No, he's waving play on. I'm sure Mel Eve's arm was up in the air then, trying to handle the ball. Couple. Greenhoff. Couple again. And the whistle's gone, just outside the area. Second United player with a shoulder knock. Uh, the news of Gordon McQueen is that he's got a badly torn shoulder muscle. Obstruction given, apparently. It's just inside the box. They can't score direct. Played back for Houston. He really got hold of that. All the power was there. But Gary Pierce right behind it. He took it very cleanly. Nickel. Now Hibbert. Couple. Makari. Parkin. This is Koppel. Greenhop. He was really going to enjoy that. He really set himself up to tank it. Daly. Beaten by Nickel. That's Parkin. Number 10 Eves. Hibbert. Jimmy Greenhoff getting through a tremendous amount of work. He's really playing with enthusiasm. Houston. Brazier. Hibbert. Parkin. Daly. covering and Daly still battling through well that was a remarkable piece of football and persistence by Steve Daly he kept going and finally blocked his way through and the shot was hard ball car parking and parking beat by couple the call to park it again Ball. Off. McElroy. Forced to check back. Couple. McCall in the way. Carr. Rick Parkin. <laughs> Nearly a minute now of injury time played in the first half. Good turn by McElroy. A call in the way. Now Brian Greenhoff. 3 1. Well, some sloppy player defense, really. Originally. But in the end, when the ball came back to Brian Greenhoff, it was stuck away with supreme authority and confidence. 46 and a half minutes gone on the watch and Wall's back in deep trouble. Centre forward Bill Rafferty put the ball down on the spot then in disgust. He really flipped it down. And there's the half-time whistle and that was a real blow to Wolves who'd fought back so well. Jimmy Greenhoff, two for Manchester United. I'm sure he'll claim the first one. It was deflected by a defender. His brother Brian Greenhoff got the other one just uh, seconds ago. And the Wolves goal scored by their captain Kenny Hibbert. Marvellously entertaining first half of the sunshine. Wolves 1, Manchester United 3. In these uh, two sides in the league, only five have been goalless, so they've well lived up to their past performances. And in fact, in those 70 previous matches, uh, some statistician has worked out that the goals scored in the matches have worked out at 3.31. Sammy Chung just going into the... Uh, Manager's box. Matching. Lines of flags waving. Free kick to Wolves. Peter Daniel. 
Brazier's been pushed forward. That's Brazier. Rafferty. Ah, is it a penalty? And the referee says no. And Rafferty gets up in anger. But the referee immediately shook his head. And the Wolves players are still looking at the referee. And somebody has said something to him. Is it uh, Bakari? What's happened? Well, there was something off the ball of his Manchester United player but I thought it wasn't he's calling one of the Wolves players to him and I suspect it was something that was said it's Kenny Hibbert the captain and he's clearly got to be booked well the Wolves players incensed about the referee's failure to give a penalty there the crowd getting very restive as well but it's quite obvious that an awful lot of people clearly thought that was a penalty Grimes Good run, he's got pace. Now McElroy. Buckin coming to help from the back. Will he come? McElroy. And Jordan. had gone up, so did the Wolves players there was a defender wide Jordan played to the whistle, flicked it over the goalkeeper's head and the goal stands eight minutes gone in the second half, the referee rightly checking with the linesman the linesman kept the flag down and I believe it was because the defender had stayed wide the defender who was possibly not in the picture, very wide there, and I think that was the reason. And having just been refused a penalty at one end, they find themselves down by three goals now to what was, to say the least, a controversial decision. I thought I caught sight out of the corner of my eye, a defender wide, and I assume that's why the linesman kept the flag down. Peter Daniel. Eves. Rafferty. Eves. Right, I have Dicker on. It's Hibbert. Ryan Green. McCall. goes in the book. Steve Daly. Perhaps entering a plea on Brian Greenhoff's behalf, but the name's in the book. Hibbert to Carr, Hibbert, Hibbert again, Nickel. Rafferty, now number 11, Daly. What a goal, a magnificent goal. And the drama just goes on and on. Daly then with all the neatness is displayed throughout the match. Pulled the ball, struck it beautifully with the other foot, and Roach was left grasping thin air. 66 minutes in this remarkable match. Wolves 2, Manchester United 4. Roach still wondering what happened. Well, that was a gem. And so unexpected. Daniel. Porter.
crowd giving Wolves the encouragement they need, perhaps scenting another revival. Goal kick. It's Jordan, Parkin, McElroy, Jimmy Greenoff, Jordan, Jimmy Greenoff again. McCall, good play by the centre back, nearly found Nickel. Parkin in, Nickel, Grimes. Found Jimmy Greenhoff, Macari, Grimes, number seven, Couple, chance, saved at point blank range by the goalkeeper, just threw himself at the ball, he had no time to do anything else, and Walls escape. It's Couple, and brings it up the line, so Couple robbed twice in about 10 15 seconds. Looping over the goalkeeper's head and Brazier off the line. That's it. An astonishing match. With spectacular goals. Controversy as well. Comes to an end. Steve Daly for me, the man of the match. Scorer of one of the goals, but on the losing side. So the final score, Wolverhampton Wanderers 2, Manchester United 4. A really colourful and exciting match, full of entertainment. And there's plenty to argue about as well. Well, there is too, and Wolverhampton fans probably want to argue about a couple of decisions that went against them when they were 3-1 down. First of all, they thought they might have had a penalty, and secondly, a goal that was against them might have been disallowed for offside. But just look at this penalty decision. There it is, Houston running into the ball for Rafferty, and you can see his own goalkeeper trips him, Houston, and he falls on Rafferty. And the key to that situation is that a foul must be intentional to be given by the referee. And although it looked as if it might be a penalty, I think the referee read it absolutely correctly. The second one, very clear cut indeed. Patching is clearing the ball. And you can see here Sammy McElroy, who whacks it straight back there. A beautiful opportunist pass. And it's Jordan running loose, but David Coleman correctly spotted that defender on the right. You can see him top left of the screen. That's Patching, and he's played Jordan on, as you can see. Couldn't get out quickly enough. And that was the split-second decision which the linesman saw absolutely correctly. So that you can see these Wolves players now who got so excited when they were uh, protesting here about both those decisions, particularly this second one, were wrong in showing dissent and wrong uh, to show dissent as well. And doubly wrong in that case. They were, weren't even right in their appeal.